And we're live. So welcome everyone to a very special Summer of Sarah McLean chat. My name's Dana. And I am Kelly. And we are thrilled beyond <laughs> belief to have the queen, Sarah McLean herself, here <laughs> to join us in this discussion and celebration of hashtag Summer of Sarah McLean. Ah, it's so exciting. <laughs> I can't, summer. I'm really like floored by this. This is the <laughs> coolest thing that has ever happened. So thank you. <laughs> Both. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of it. It's really awesome. I'm so excited. Thank you. Um, but I was telling Kelly and Dana before we started that I have not done the reading for <laughs> that student for this class. So, so forgive me. I'm a little concerned. You know, you hear those stories about people who go to like Star Trek conventions and like. <laughs> It's not not that I'm comparing you necessarily, but like you know, they go to like um, you know I, I don't know Leonard Nimoy, and they say like in season two, episode three, is there a reason why the character was wearing right. purple? <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. But I'm I ready. Mean, yeah, that's the first question. Like at the Worthington Ball, what color dress? Is? <laughs> Who are the Worthington? <laughs> the real question. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one I know. That one I know. <laughs> You're a little prepared. <laughs> Oh my God, I love that so much. So for those watching who haven't been following along with Summer of Sarah McLean, we've been reading Sarah's backlist all summer and we've been discussing them as a group together. And I know the group members who are watching can attest to like how great it's been to fill the quarantine void with Sarah's books. They've just brought us all so much happiness and it's been really great to bond with everyone and just talk about romance in a really intellectual way, which has been so much fun. So Kelly and I have definitely been in awe of just all of the explorations we've all had every week of feminism and the patriarchy and romance tropes. And it's been so great. Yes, we are McLeaners. We love you. And Sarah, we love you. Have you have a name. <laughs> Our group name, we're the McLeaners. Oh um, and so we're so grateful to you, Sarah, for not only giving us these books, which are the place that we sought solace and comfort in this very unpredictable year, um, but also for joining us today so we can quiz you about them. <laughs> this is honestly the best quarantine gift you guys could have given me. Like, I... I have been studiously avoiding the hashtag <laughs> because I didn't for lots of reasons, like, but I I have I just want you to know from the very start, I have been so grateful to you for doing this. And every once in a while a a tweet will sort of go by and I am tagged in it or you know, an Instagram post. And it's just so amazing to think that like all of you out there are reading these books and it makes me feel like I'm not doing you know, so bad. <laughs> but I mean, really, it does. It makes you, you know, this, oh. it's really hard in this time to yeah. be, I mean, for all of us, we're all having a tough time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you spend a lot of time when you write books that are designed to give people joy, thinking like, well, should I be, you know, should I go to law school and, you know, I don't know, do something else? <laughs> I don't know how do I Whatever, help wherever <laughs> law school I go to medical school and like quick become an epidemiologist. Um, <laughs> and so, and no. so it's really nice when people are like, no, no, you're doing the right, you're on the right path. These are, are. so thank you, thank yes. you for all of this. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so Kelly and I have been compiling compiling our like burning questions for you. Um, so we've been kind of doing that for the past couple of months and writing them down. And then we also have questions from the group. And then the last couple of minutes, we'll open it up to questions and discussions from the chat. So Yay. hold your questions. We will bring them on the screen at the end. I don't want to miss anything. So yeah. <laughs> Um, but we do have the very cool ability to pull comments up onto the screen. So definitely share your reactions as we talk, as we ask Sarah questions, um, because we can pull them up and show everyone, which is exciting. Um, but yeah, Sarah, if you're ready, let's I'm start. Ready. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I think. So <laughs> we decided to go chronologically uh, with your books because yes. we kind of wanted to see that like writer evolution. So we started with the season, which is your debut, and it's a YA novel. <laughs> And oh, I, chestnuts. Right? <laughs> it's like a beautiful, beautiful cover. Like really that's the new cover. Yes. It's the new cover. It was the 10th anniversary cover. So oh I, I mean, that makes me feel old, but yeah, <laughs> 11 years old, Amazing. that book. 
Wait, so can you tell us then like about your start in publishing? Why did you kind of go YA first? Why did you end up then transitioning to adult? How did the magic begin? I uh, wish I had a better story than I do actually. <laughs> um, so I wrote my, it's in my bio, I wrote my first book on a dare and that is the truth. Um, it's a good added, story to start. Added bonus of being true. Um, <laughs> I worked in publishing, but I worked for this like very literary PR firm um, where I did hide that I read romance novels from mm. my boss um, because I was like, she is going to fire me if she finds <laughs> out that I would rather read, you know, Lisa Kleypas than Jonathan Franzen. So um, the, uh, so I had a lot, but because New York, I mean, you guys are both in, in the New York area, the tri-state area. Mm -hmm. And um, when you work in publishing in New York, it's a small, small world that is very focused yeah. on New York City. Um, and so you meet a lot of other young people when you're young in publishing. There are lots of groups like this one where you just sort of end up hanging out with a bunch of people who do what you do and think about, you know, books. And um, I had a group of friends who, and Twilight had just come out. And like, <laughs> we all went out and we'd all read it. Like we all yeah. were interested in what that was and how it was a juggernaut. Like it was changing the world. Yeah. And we were out and we were drinking and I was like, <laughs> I could write this. That, you know, like look at a Jackson Pollock and go like, well, I can make that. But I was like, I could do this. Like, I feel like I too understand the like deep existential angst of a 17 year old yes. girl. <laughs> Still, and, uh, and a friend of mine was like, well, I dare you to do that. And I was like, okay. So I went home and I had had, you know, just enough alcohol to think that was a good idea. And I sat down and I wrote the first chapter, not the villain chapter, but like the real first chapter, that the dress fitting chapter of um, the season. And the reason why I wrote the season was because I had spent literally my whole life until that point reading romance novels mm -hmm. like and so when i was like i could write this it was not <laughs> vampires in you know the pacific northwest that i was going to write it was absolutely going to be like girls in dresses yeah. in the regency um so i wrote the season and her fun fact there was originally a sex scene in the season um which um, <laughs> you know like not like not like a McLean section. <laughs> like, McLean light. It's like an early, yeah, like just sort of a gentle sex scene in the in the season. And uh, so, and I I sold it without an agent, like through a friend of a friend of a friend who knew. It was sort of like when I finished, I like bragged to that group of fr drinking friends, like, "Oh, I did what you, you know, I I completed the task." And then it was like, "Well, now you have to sell it," and that seemed weird. So, we just went through like you know, channels. And mm -hmm. I'd never, I didn't, I didn't know anybody, you know, who ended up buying it, but um, there, but it ended up being, you know, bought, I sold it without an agent, which is a terrible idea. Don't do that. <laughs> um, and, and uh, Scholastic was like, yeah, this sex scene has to come out. Like I can't oh, no. say it. We have book clubs oh, and um, <laughs> the flyers could not well, we work could have had. for them. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, and, but honestly, I say like, don't follow my footsteps, like don't do what I did, but because I signed a pretty terrible contract with Scholastic mm -hmm. because I didn't have an agent who was like protecting any of my interests, yeah. I was really locked down. And so I couldn't write another YA novel. Um, and oh. so, which worked out really well. I mean, I can now write another YA novel, but <laughs> it ended up working out really well because I was sort of sitting on the season. Nobody had ever written, nobody was writing historical YA. Like nobody knew how yeah. that would sell. And, you know, then I was sort of like, well, if I, if I can't, I sort of have the bug now. I want to write another thing. And then I was like, and I want to write a sex scene and like have people read it. Mm -hmm. So I <laughs> opened a vein and wrote nine rules. And <laughs> then, <laughs> <glad you did. laughs> and then once that, like once I had sort of like, once there was full penetration, I was like, <laughs> You just can't turn away. Yep. <laughs> I can say full penetration in this group, right? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Whatever you yes. want in this group, Sarah. <laughs> We're called the McLeaners. You make the rules. <laughs> so that's the story. And it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's I I wish 
I think there are a lot of there are a lot of ways that publishing is a problem, and um, yeah. one of the big ones is um, that it is that luck is a huge piece of the puzzle in publishing. Mm-hmm. There are so many people who are incredibly talented who never get um, a shot, and that and that goes double for people who are in marginalized communities. But like the, it was real luck for me. Yeah. yeah. I love hearing the story of how it all came to be. Um, so speaking of the season, I we all loved it so much as like a primer for historicals. Mm-hmm. And since we both hadn't read it when it came out, we loved like the idea of like, what if we could have had like this historical light as teens. Yeah. And so we really wanted to know if when you were writing it and you know, during the publishing process, did you kind of envision sequels for it to be a series? Because there are a girl, three gang, Mm -hmm. and stay Um, home. Vivi's book (laughs) is, um, Vivi's book is half written. Uh, It exists. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Uh, And um, there, you know, I was a romance reader, first and foremost. Like, I you know cut, you know, I cut my teeth on like Devereaux and Garwood and Lindsay and like <laughs> all those big families back in the day. Um, and I, so for me, like sitting down and writing the season, I was like, oh, I know how this goes. Like I set everybody <laughs> up and then you like set them up like dominoes and let them fall for the rest of time. Right. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, Vivian and Ella were both supposed to get books. You know, it's very clear who Vivi's matches. I think in the season, it's the brother. Mm-hmm. whose name is, Will. Will. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had like some crazy idea that Ella was going to be matched with an American boy. Oh. Like a, like somewhere, I have a biography in my office um, about <laughs> uh, a Dolly Madison. And I was like, oh, like maybe he's like Dolly Madison's nephew or something. <laughs> I never got there. And I have to tell you that it probably wouldn't have ended up being an American because, you know, okay. America is not that great at that time. So, um, yeah. but there's, but uh, yeah, so yeah, it was all set up. Interesting. And then Freddie Stanhope was supposed to get a book too. We love Stanhope. He and then Stanhope the comes favorite. back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> many times. Yeah, many times. Many he was times. on Background Bay in many books. Oh. <laughs> Wait, and then he marries a widow, right? Like he yes. gets married. Yeah. He does. Yeah. He marries a widow. Because I couldn't, I had always intended to write a story for him because he's adorable. I he's know. The um, <laughs> and then, and obviously, like, I don't know that I could have, uh, yeah. So I had always intended to write a story, but he was locked up in the season yeah. universe. So the best way that I could do oh. it was to dance him by in the background. Yeah, he was a group favorite. We were so thrilled every (laughs) single time he showed up again. (laughs) And the whole group wanted us to ask about his HEA. And then we finally got to the scene where you see him in the background with his widow. And it's like, oh, he ends up happy. Like, it was (laughs) so nice (laughs) for all of us. Right, probably with a woman named Kelly. Like that's just what's <laughs> <laughs> team to be. Oh, Stanhope, he was so cute, Freddie. I love so him. Cute. <laughs> um, so a really fun thing in the group has been like what everyone's like first was, and oh, so yeah. Dana's was a Scott in the Dark. Um, oh no, sorry, mine was a Scott in the Dark. <laughs> Dana's was the Rogue Not Taken. Um, a lot of readers, Nine Rules, they started right at the beginning with you. <gasps> Thank um, you. But if you were to recommend a book or a series of yours to a brand new reader, would you kind of want them to start right at the beginning? Would you throw them in the deep end? Probably not. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I, that's a hard one. I mean, I probably would not send somebody back to 2010 to read nine rules first. Um, I feel like nine, I don't, I don't, no, you it's guys. amazing. So we all have it on a pedestal. It's yeah. Real flabby. You're wrong. No, no, it's it's Callie very and long. Long. no, 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 no. Like the longest romance best. novel. Okay, interview um. over. Bye, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, look, here's the thing about Callie and Ralston. I think if you're like a true romance reader, like if you yeah. love romance as a genre, mm-hmm. Callie and Ralston are really going to scratch an itch for you yeah. because I opened a vein with that book, right? So like mm-hmm. the liter- the list is basically just like shit I wanted to watch romance <laughs> heroines do. And like... Us too. So, so like 
I wrote the book where I was like, Callie gets to do all the stuff I like to watch romance heroines do. Um, and then like it's Wallflower Rake and there's Unrequited Love. And like, I really packed that full of tropes. Like if you love yeah. a trope, it's probably in there somewhere. A duel, a bet. <laughs> I mean, like, wow, there's a lot going on in there, which is why it's 140,000 words or something. But um, the it's, not. <laughs> it's 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 my longest book by far. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I always lean toward the Casino series as like okay. a good yeah, 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 yeah. starter for me. Um, although I appreciate that Born is a tough ship to to <laughs> love. <laughs> we all had our conflicts with Born. <laughs> I love Bourne. Bourne is okay. a real asshole, and I too had conflicts with Bourne when I was writing that book. <laughs> so much so that you will notice that Bourne does not appear in the following two books because I was like, fuck oh. that guy. He gets to go live on an <laughs> island. <laughs> I mean, he does kidnap her. So. <laughs> I mean, it's light kidnapping. <laughs> it's fine. She wanted to be there. It was fine. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I do think that here's the thing. I don't know that I would necessarily start with Born. I often start people with Cross and Pippa. Oh, okay. Oh, everyone loves because, Pippa. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They're cute. They love to talk to each other. Cross is like deeply broken. You know, there's like, there's a lot of Sarah McLean, like, you know, id <laughs> in there. Um, I don't know. But now, I don't know. I think it's hard. I, I might say, I, I have lots of opinions about my books, which I'm sure you will ask you will you will ask me about, and I have no filter, so I will tell you. Um, but the, like you're wrong, nine rules is very flabby. Um, but the um, but I actually think I'm really proud of the bare knuckle bastards. Mm -hmm. Like I, as a writer, I feel like I set out to do a thing and I did a thing. And so for me, like if you're willing to give me three books, those are the three. Okay. That feels really kind of accurate in some ways because having read everything and I had read obviously those three books. So then coming back to it and being like, oh, well, that character was a prototype mm -hmm. of Beast and that character was mm -hmm. like what Sarah was trying to do and she yes. did it. Well, like, so, like Hattie I get it. is like Callie all grown mm -hmm. up. Yeah. yeah. And I think, look, so I'm Sarah from 2009 all grown <laughs> up. So like it makes sense that that's I don't know it's hard this this yeah. whole process is very terrifying for me that you're reading like all of them in order <laughs> I was telling Kelly and Dana earlier that Jen listened to all of my audiobooks back to back Jen my co-host the co-host of my podcast um listened to all my my audiobooks back to back and I was like this is a terrible mistake we're never gonna be friends after <laughs> and she was like you have a lot of tells and now I'm like I can't write I know <laughs> She told them to me, and now I'm like, anytime I write the word forever, I'm like, <gasps> don't look at me, I'm a monster. <laughs> I know. So. They're just they're the Sarahisms. That's what we call them in the group. <laughs> well, thank you. You're kind. <laughs> I feel like that's like a perfect segue to our Sarahisms question. So we really love like your Greek mythology and your mm -hmm. deals and your wagers that happen and all of the cross dressing. Every time a one was wears pants in your books, I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> the best. Um, so like, are these like just your personal like catnip when reading or are these like things that you kind of feel like help the plot move forward? I think it's a little of both. I think at the beginning, things like the Greek references, the mythology, all of that. So I'm, I was real. I'm really interested in the classical myths. I've always been interested in the classical myths. I really like books that like play with retellings. And in the early days, I was writing the myths that we all really know, right? I've done Hades and Persephone, and you know, whatever I've done, sort of the big ones. And um, and then I then it became sort of a thing. It was like, well, <laughs> well, if I'm going to sit down and write a book, like there's going to be some sort of classical reference in it. And then I got really excited because I'm start now I'm really down the rabbit hole in like <laughs> obscure <laughs> myths, right? Like the lion, Cyrene the Lion Killer is the is the myth that's uh that's Grace's book. Mm -hmm. Or well, you guys aren't at the Bare Knuckle Bastards. So what am I thinking? What are you talking about? You're talking about Day of the Day Duchess. Of the Duchess, Day of the Duchess. Uh, which is um Orion and 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 the 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 sisters, mm -hmm. right? The seven sisters, which is a nod to my background. I miss I went to Smith, so like 
it made sense that I would someday that that series about sisters about sisterhood would ultimately end with the seven sisters. Um, and so like for me, that story, I didn't know the story of Orion and yeah. um, Mary, Mary Opie, is that right? I, that's who I don't it is. Know the, that's who it is. I don't know the pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> weirdly, I don't know the pronunciation either. Um, so, but, <laughs> um, so she, but I didn't know that story. And then yeah. when I was writing that book, I was like, oh well, I know I want the Seven Sisters. What are the stories mm -hmm. of the Seven Sisters? Like how? But I don't usually come up with the myth until I'm about halfway through the book, oh, and wow. then I go wow. looking. Except okay. for. <laughs> Bare Knuckle Bastards book three, which is Grace's book, Daring and the Duke, the one that just came out, um, is the myth. The myth is Cyrene, the lion killer, um, and Apollo. And at some point past Sarah, like long ago, opened a document <laughs> on her computer, named it Grace's book, literally. <laughs> and there was nice. one line in it, and it said, Grace is Cyrene, the lion killer. And I was like, and I opened that document and I was like, who is Cyrene? <laughs> <laughs> and then I like Googled her and I was like, oh, great job past me. <laughs> this is the story of this book. So. Oh my gosh. So yeah. I mean, is all of it born just out of this love for mythology or, cause it feels like in a way that you write about these tragedies and it's almost like you're trying to like fix them, like right the wrongs yeah. of these old heartbreaks. So mythology is really interesting, right? Because this is storytelling that was happening around the fire. Like mm -hmm. storytelling has been happening for millennia. It's our, and, and these stories are retold over and over again. Like if you pick any myth, any myth like mm -hmm. the famous ones, Persephone and Hades, right? There are about 17,000 different versions of that book, <laughs> of that of that story. And even in like ancient text, there are, there is no sort of codified story there. Like mm -hmm. there are lots of problematic versions of that story. There are pr versions where they're in love. There's like people retell, have retold myths for millennia, literally. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, I feel like a lot of the work that I do around mythology is sort of adding my voice to that. Like, I'm around a fire. We're around a fire together. Let me tell you this story in a way that is not a tragedy, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes the, the myths that are told in the stories are sort of slightly changed. Sometimes they're, you know, classic versions of the myths. It depends on what I'm trying to do with it. But always I like for you to sort of look at the book at the end. And I don't know how many people actually do this, but like, if you look at the book at the end, you will see that I have told you that story, like we are around a fire. Yeah. But I've told it to you with hope and happiness at the end. Yeah. And like triumph. And cause that's what we deserve as people who don't get that all the time. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I love hearing that too, because always in mythology, like females, ha women have no power and you give them that power in your retellings within your books and the women in your books always have agency and it's just so fantastic to read and discuss with the group. Thank you. Um, yeah, and so one thing we've also all loved is the Easter eggs and the universe that you've written connecting everyone together. And since we're marching forward in time with all of your books and we're moving towards Victorian England with Daring the Duke, one thing we wanted to know is if there is a historical event that you're really excited to write in the future that you know your books are kind of working towards. That is a good question. Um, Victoria is queen now in the McLean universe. Mm -hmm. You guys have three more books and then um, but during the next three books, uh, Victoria will be coronated. And I've moved now from the Regency straight through to Victoria. Um, and the books have changed over the time. And I think like partially that's because of what's going on in the world in the books. Mm -hmm. I don't have a specific event that I am writing toward. You know, Laura Lee Gerke liked to say she was 
Laura Lee wrote, um, you know, was writing really linear. Every she wrote a book a year and and moved the story forward once a year, you know, every year through Victorian times. And her goal was to write a train, like, and then you know, to get a character get, to get characters on trains. And so, like, um, I don't have that. I just am, <laughs> I'm just moving forward. And but I knew when Victoria came, the books would evolve. Like they would have to yeah. the same way that um, the world really changed with her. And I knew that the books would have to tackle different things. Like Victoria comes with a lot of, yeah. it comes with a lot of like remarkable, um, remarkable change, like technology and, and innovation and culture, but she also comes with a lot of problem and um, yeah. like how I was going to tackle that. I sort of knew I was, wa I was working toward something that would ultimately hopefully be important. And I did not know then that it would be 2020 when I wrote the first yeah. book where Victoria was queen. Yeah. And uh, that felt really important in some way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we're all really excited to kind of go into the bare knuckle series to take that next step. Um, for a lot of us, you know, Dana and I have read the whole series for a lot of the McLeaners, it's gonna be brand new or Grace's book is brand new, which is exciting. Right. Um, and I know a lot of writers kind of feel, they'll have a story in their head, an idea that they wanna save, cause they're like, I'm not ready as a writer to write this yet. Mm. And as a reader, it kind of feels like you have been working your way up to the Bare Knuckle Bastard story and working your way up to telling it. And is that how it felt as a writer? No, <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, so in a sense, yes, because I've, I've sort of, I have been the the part that doesn't feel like it was planned was sort of, I now, of course, looking back over fifteen books, like I can see where I was going. I can see mm -hmm. that I was moving myself out of ballrooms, like moving myself out of the aristocracy. I was sort mm -hmm. of like, really pulling the whole. I've I've always been much more interested in the books that were happening like in the dark rather mm -hmm. than in the light, right? So. Um, that movement toward the bare knuckle bastards in the dark sort of seems logical in in hindsight, um, but the so the, but it wasn't entirely planned. It's just like, you know, as you're writing a, as as a writer, you start to just sort of evolve into the book the stories that you want to tell mm -hmm. um, or that you're naturally drawn to, and then um, but for the bastards themselves. I knew the end game of the Bare Knuckle Bastards books, which I, you know, we won't talk about because I know there are there are a lot of new readers, and I don't want to spoil it. Um, but you know the end game too of the <laughs> of the Bare Knuckle Bastards series, like the end of Daring and the Duke. I knew that four years ago. I knew exactly oh, wow. what was going to have to happen in order for this series to work for me and for the characters, okay. and so. Um, that was the only set piece I knew, like was that three three books in, 27 chapters in, <laughs> this would happen. And everything else was a big question mark. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but now of course, so now I've sort of done that. <laughs> the question is like, what comes next, right? That is the big question. Yeah. <laughs> We're really excited about what's coming next. Great. It's going to be just what you're excited right. about. Sure. Tell me. Tell me what you're excited about. I mean, you, so early on, so you happened to announce your Hell's Bells series the day that we announced the Summer of Sarah McLean. Oh, which really? Was clearly not planned because you did not call us to tell us. No. Oh, my gosh. So, like, literally, Dana and I were setting up all the Instagram posts, and then I think she texted me. She's like, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're thrilled. Yay. And we kind of early on as we were reading started compiling theories as a group of who the Bells would be. Um, <laughs> and then all of our theories just burned up <laughs> during your Entertainment Weekly interview when you Sorry. revealed, you no, know, I have never been happier to be wrong. Um, because the the first book is gonna be about it's Cecily. Cecily. And yeah, Caleb. Cecily yeah. Tal Talbot comes back, the first of the bells. Um, <laughs> she has been cooking for a while. I've needed her. Yeah. I needed her in uh, the Bastards books. Um, and now um, Cecily finally, finally gets her day and her dude. So, you know, um, which is a really different kind of book for me. They're, they have yeah. a past already and not the kind of past that my characters, <laughs> not like, oops, I almost killed you or like, 
we've, you know, had like deep rooted emotional trauma between us. Like these are just two people who like have missed their star crossed, right? Mm -hmm. um, I guess they're not star crossed. They're like missed connections, like on the subway. <laughs> um, and so, but at the same time, like Cecily has a plan, right? Like Cecily okay. is a bell and, and the, you know, the Hell's Bells are a girl gang and they are real. Like people can go to them and help and to get, you know, to get their problems fixed. Okay. And so, um, so Cecily has work to do and she's no time for, you know, <laughs> <laughs> dummy <American>. men, <laughs> dummy men who don't know what they want. So poor Caleb, but um, I think you guys will be really. I hope you'll be happy. But what's what's very fun for me is the like McLean universe gets to all. Everybody gets to hang out more, right? <laughs> um, because I really love. I miss. I miss them when they're gone. Like I like yeah. that I can you know go back to the casino or go back to the bar and to the you know. Um, What's the name of that tavern? The Singing Sparrow. Is that right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the name of that place they own. Um, you know, I can. I know I can always like if I'm looking for a dressmaker, I can always go to the dressmaker. You. you know, it's just really a nice feeling. I feel like I've built this big universe, and I never have to leave them all. Yeah. Although I Ross mean, and Callie are getting old, you guys. How old are they? <laughs> I don't know. Nice. They are, they're getting old though. No, <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about it. I have to think about it. But they're okay. still around. Like they turn up sometimes. They Ralph turn turns up, up and like says something droll and then like wanders off. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's why we had theories that like it could be their kids. Everyone mm. who had a child were like, yeah. Sarah that was might write their theory. Book. I got yeah. so many messages about like, oh, are the bells the like children of the Barnacle Bastards? And I was like, what? What? Why would I do <laughs> <Big> time <laughs> Um, so I'm sorry if you thought it was kids. It's not kids. It's, fine. It's, fine. Uh, it's it's Cecily and three new people, but you've met you've met you've seen them all. Okay. Um, and then there, are, but the bells are a larger group than four. There will be four, and then additionals. Exciting. So I don't know. I mean, if it's like could, there could be twenty, it could be Hell's Bells could be like. <laughs> Just the Bridgertons, my Bridgertons yes. days. So yeah, just keep yeah. going. <laughs> we'll call Shonda. <laughs> Please, right. someone call Shonda. <laughs> Trying. I'm just a girl standing in front of the Netflix, <laughs> asking them to love me. <laughs> historical romance. <laughs> Um, should we head into a like very quick like lightning round before questions yes. that we have from our group? Yes. All right, Dana, I will let you start our lightning round. Sarah, are you ready? <laughs> like I'm fast ready. answers. Yeah. Okay. Is it a quiz? Is it a quiz? It is not no, a quiz. No, just like fun <laughs> questions. <laughs> I would for sure fail. Go on. <laughs> so on the topic of why this whole read along came about, if you had to be quarantined with any of your couples, who would it be? Luke and Hattie. Okay, uh, great. <laughs> what couple? <laughs> Uh, what couple do you think throws the best holiday parties? Oh, Juliana and Simon. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Juliana and Simon. That's right. Wait, that's right. They're a thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> there was silence. Like, we, I was like, wait, did I write about those people? Is that their name? <laughs> Juliana and Simon. Juliana Just throws handle. a great party, for sure. Although, I mean, yeah, no. Got him. <laughs> Here we go. Simon throws a great party. I mean, I everyone love loves a scandal. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone loves a scandal. Everyone loves a scandal. <laughs> um, if you had to collaborate with another romance author, any subgenre, who would it be and what genre would you write together? Oh, that's a hard one because there's I mean, I would I would literally write anything anytime with Sophie Jordan and Joanna Shu because <laughs> they are great people who I love desperately and like any anything, anytime. Um, <laughs> exactly. Tessa too. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so, and they're like good friends who I think would be fun to write with. Um, but okay. like, as a writer, I would love to write with Kennedy Ryan, who oh. I th every time I read a book by her, I'm like, holy crap, she really does the business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, but so, but I, I, I can't imagine Kennedy would want to write with me because, you know, she's a genius. Um, and then, and of course, and like, I would do, I would do crime to write with Lisa Kleypas. So, oh, yeah. you know, 
Somebody the other day <laughs> tweeted at me and was like, you and Lisa Claypool should write a crossover. And I was like, uh, yeah, we should. <laughs> You're like, I'm waiting. Should. <laughs> I am surprised yeah, Cressley is not on this list. Oh, uh, well, Cressley's like, I mean, I don't think I could. I don't have the chops for it. Like, I don't have the chops to write IA. <laughs> like a, a level of bonkers. <laughs> no. <laughs> Cressley is like, uh, like she, there is like, there is everyone. And then there is like Cressley writing like in the ether. Like you just, uh, like, <laughs> I, I don't have the chops for it. No. I mean, I spend a lot of time. I have all these like sticky notes on my, on my desk, on my monitor. And like, what would Cressley do is my like, <laughs> Biggest question because I and it's funny because when I was writing Brazen and the Beast, which you guys haven't gotten to, Brazen and the Beast, fun fact for for as you're reading, Brazen and the Beast is the first book that I read, um, that I wrote while during Fate of Mates. Like I was working on the podcast with you know rereading Cressley during while I was writing Brazen. And there were definitely there were moments where my editor was like circle a line and just like question mark in the corner. And it was like, he would rip their heads from their body. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's, oh, that's crusty. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I mean, oh, um, that's yeah. That's great. I like had written down as one of my questions that I had wondered if you had learned anything as a reader or a writer from your time hosting Faded Mates. So I guess <laughs> that's okay. every day, every day, I mean, every book. It's, I feel like Faded Mates is the best thing I could have done for my writing. I really, really believe that because I think every aside from the first season which was really just like a remarkable like education in how you build a series and how you like actually structure books that require you know a reader to just like hang on to a thread for multiple books um aside from just like that piece in the first series now when i when we do the deep dives on each on tropes there's so much mm -hmm. like to learn about what is it that scratches the itch about a trope, like from a trope? Like how do you really nail a trope? Yeah. Um, and then when we're reading these books that, you know, the the season two is the what we call the books that blooded us, right? Like the mm -hmm. books that made us romance readers and made us readers who like under, who suddenly kind of understand the scope, the what a, what romance can do for readers. Yeah. Um, as a writer, that's a real gift to, to be able to have the luxury to really like sit and think about that and make sure that when you're writing, you're reader focused. Um, I think a lot of times when writers misstep, it's because they're writing a book for themselves and not for the, the reader. Um, and so for me, like Fate of Mates reminds me that it's reader first always. It's amazing. So. Okay. I'll take us back to our lightning round. <laughs> now that we've that one yeah, sorry. Okay. Madam H wants to design a dress for you. Where are you going? Well, oh, I don't know. I want to go to the Met Gala if she's designing. <laughs> like, go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next few are all this or that questions. So the first one is road trip to Scotland versus roulette at the gaming hell. Oh, roulette at the gaming hell. I mean, I can do a road trip to Scotland anytime. So. <laughs> Uh, would I you mean, rather not, not in 2020? But... <laughs> no, in normal times. Uh, next one: shortbread cookies or strawberry tarts? Oh, strawberry tarts! <laughs> that tart thief, that tart thief king. Oh, beauty. <laughs> okay, sex scene: carriage ride or boxing ring? Oh, boxing ring, <laughs> obviously. But you know, Joanna okay. Shoup did a lot of research on um, carriage sex. She has, she confirmed, <laughs> I have not asked her how, but she swears <laughs> she did the research and you can in fact have penetrative sex in a carriage from the region. Okay, so, I hope there was experimentation in, in case that research. you were wondering, Joanna knows, she's got what, it. What a hero <laughs> to do that. Yes. Yeah. Shiro. <laughs> um, breeches or ball gown? Breeches, obviously. I mean. <laughs> and the last one is scandal sheet or bucket list? Scandal sheet. <laughs> 
All right, and our very last lightning round questions. Um, so we just did some Instagram voting, asking everyone to vote for their favorite cover and step back of yours. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to know who the winners are. Yes, of course I do, okay. yes. <laughs> um, cover winner. Really? Uh, step back winner. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> Just <laughs> dominated. <laughs> is our queen. Oh, that step back is <laughs> it's bananas. Oh so I went to that right shoot. We I went to that cover shoot. Really? And that man who you can find on Instagram, his name, his Instagram name is Thomas the Boxer. Okay. He is okay. French and a boxer <laughs> and absolutely enormous. Like really? Kelly, you have met me. I am not a small person. And <laughs> tall when, I mean, like I am six feet tall and like not a small person. And this dude hugged me at the end of it. And I thought like, it was like, I was in a romance novel. <laughs> you know, when I, I write that line that, okay. McLe what is it? A McLeanism <laughs> where like, she felt small, like in his arms <laughs> for the first time ever. Yeah. That guy <laughs> makes me feel like a romance heroine. Wow. And like, it was a great, that was a great cover shoot. It was like playing Barbies with like two of the most beautiful people I've ever <laughs> oh, they're met. Both gorgeous. I know. And then, I mean, it is a bit weird because, you know, you're sort of, you want to play Barbies and like be yeah. like, no, put your hand there. And then you sort of have to whisper <laughs> it to like the art director and be like, <laughs> gigantic hand on her thigh <laughs> and the art director's like oh she's so pervy and unprofessional but like look at him I mean, yes gorgeous. we need it they're we both it. gorgeous i mean would this then be or is this your favorite cover and step back or is um, it my so favorite many cover ones? my favorite cover is the day of the duchess oh i think um, that kelly's <laughs> I got us. I really love that cover. She's it's so, you know why? She's so Sarah. Like yeah. she, she, she's just exactly what I envisioned. Um, it's beautiful. And my favorite step back, oh, that's a good one, Brazen. <laughs> the Wick, yeah. the um, Daring and the Duke step back is really great too. I'm, I mean, those two also, incre I went to that too, incredibly beautiful people. Yeah. Amazing. doing beautiful things. There's also a step back in nine rules that no longer is nine rules is in. It's like, yeah, whatever printing. So when it. they hit a certain, let me see. I have it. Give me one. Yes. <laughs> Though I think was it was nine rules. The like runner up against Brazen. I think nine rules was the runner up. All right. This is really like percent. really hot. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's the on the grab. I love that. I mean, it's basically the same. Show that brazen one again. <laughs> it's just closer. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, it's very. It's more thigh. Oh my god! It's like basically the exact same one, except yeah. Hattie's really doing the business over there. That's the thing. Yeah, Hattie's in a very like power position. The, these books, these first three were designed by a guy named Ricky Mujica, and this was like in early enough days that like they were he painted over them. So like, oh. it's not, he did, it was like a double, he would he would work with, with them online and then he would like, I don't know, he would like print them or put them on yeah. canvas and then he would like work with them on canvas. They don't oh, do that wow. anymore. That's incredible um, though. He's so talented. And then I don't know what happened to him because he's not my artist anymore. Although my new artist oh. is great too. Yes, amazing. <laughs> Awesome. All right. I think we're going to switch over to some questions from the McLeaners. Uh, Dana, if you want to take oh, it wait, away. Somebody says oh, yes. they're sad. I'm sorry. I'm just, I have chat going by and I, mm -hmm. I just saw somebody said that they were sad that ebooks don't have step backs. The new, um, my, my bare knuckle, well, Hattie, I was really, I asked Avon to put the step back for Hattie Yay. in the ebook because I wanted it to be like, I wanted there to be a plus size girl, like getting it on as many places as possible. Yes. <laughs> billboard. Um, yeah, like, yeah, can we take out a billboard? <laughs> and then I feel like people were really happy or I don't know, maybe they just like Avon just, I don't know. It's just coded for me now over there, but they're, the step back for Grace, I, I think is in Daring in the Duke too. That's so incredible. my hope is that step backs will continue, but um, I do think we're about to go into a period of time where clinches are tricky because uh, it's tough to take a picture right now of two yeah. strangers unmasked in a room. Yeah. yeah, I had not 
thought about how that would affect upcoming covers. Yeah, yeah. I think we're about to see, well, we've already obviously, we're seeing lots and lots of illustrated covers, so that's yeah. great. Um, but in historicals, like, I think I'm lucky in that my covers are almost, are all just standalone women. So yeah. that's an easy shot to take. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think we're about to see some cl like clinches really change. Yeah. So. Okay. That's interesting and upsetting. I know. So let's, you know, I don't know, end this so that we can I bring guess, back please. <laughs> for Everyone. no other reason, you guys, yeah. than to, to bring back the clinch. So that's <laughs> the all that matters. One, yeah, right. exactly. Um, so our first question from the group that we've collected is from Melissa Lee, and she wants to know what's your favorite and least favorite part of writing. So that's a that's a big one. <laughs> My favorite. Uh, my least favorite part of writing is writing. <laughs> it's actually draft. It really is. It's actually drafting. Um, it it takes me a long time. I'm an incredibly slow writer. I like spend a lot of time. Actually, yesterday I texted Sophie Jordan like the worst part of writing is the beginning of chapters. So if you want something <laughs> even specific, more specific, it's because you end up like it's like chapter seven, and then you're like, I don't know how to start. <laughs> it feels like every. I always have to like. I have to do that every time. Um, but my very favorite part of writing is revision. So um, I would bet that at any point during your chats, if somebody, if like there's been a sort of general agreement that some scene was perfect or like <laughs> some moment was excellent, it went in in revision. To the point where when you read, I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna, here's a guess. I'm gonna guess that when you read um, Bourne's book, which is read and called, the rogue, no, a rogue, a by, rogue any by any other name. <laughs> um, when you read that book, somebody said, God, I love the letters at the beginning of these chapters. Yes. And the truth is that those letters were written in the middle of the night, the day before I turned copy edits in. Oh, wow. <laughs> because I was like, I don't know about this book. Born is terrible. How am I going to make it more romantic? I hate this man. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so I literally stayed up all night, like that whole night, like for hours. And I wrote, I can still see myself in my old apartment. I printed out the whole manuscript and I had it in piles. And I like hand wrote the letters between the two of them for every <laughs> single thing. Wow. And then ultimate, luckily, he stops writing back. And then I just had to <laughs> it got easier. <laughs> and then I was like, Ugh, maybe he stops writing back. <laughs> Uh, so then, you know, and then like the letters actually now are the, one of the things that I get the most, yeah, you know, reader They're response wonderful. to. Oh, that is very yeah. Cool. Revision, maybe it's like deadlines or stress or whatever, but revision is the best part for me. It's the magic. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Mandy wants to know, uh, so she says, many of your books push boundaries as they explore challenges unique to women. Uh, what challenges and perspectives are you itching to write next? I'm so, I'm so, I still have a lot to say about women. So a lot to say about <laughs> patriarchy, you guys. Sorry, but. Uh, oh, I think what she says, is there something like in, <laughs> in that realm of women yeah. and patriarchy? Yeah, I mean, I have a lot. I, I really am... I've never written um, in Scandal and Scoundrel. I, it's it's connected by sisters, obviously, but it's not about sisters. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, what I'm excited about with Hell's Bells, is writing a true sisterhood. Like I've never written a sisterhood, um, and I've never written, um, I've never written anything where like it really, it really felt like it was connected organically and like impossible to untangle the mm -hmm. heroines. Um, and so I'm really excited to talk about like how women um, operate together. I sort of touched on women's anger in Daring and the Duke, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think anger will continue, like the power of women's anger um, is going to be a big piece of what comes in Hell's Bells. Um, in a in a different kind of way. I don't think Hell's Bells is as sad in some ways as some of the other books. It's back to like a more kind of fun, rollicking, you know, just women doing, doing, doing trouble. <laughs> the best. 
<laughs> like I'm just taught, I, I like I don't want to write about women's pain anymore. I want to write about like yes. women just like burning shit down and like getting what they want. <laughs> yes. As they deserve. So. <laughs> Uh, so excited for Hell's Bells. So this next question comes from B and Her Books. So that's a very specific question. <laughs> so can you talk about how you were inspired by the imagery of the shipwreck wood desk in Never Judge a Lady by her cover? What? B's favorite. <laughs> <She's> happening. <laughs> That's not nice. That's a mean <laughs> question. The shipwreck wood desk. I know the book. <laughs> I'm, I'm familiar with the for, book. For the rest, for the rest of the <laughs> I honest to God do not remember that desk. So here we are. I did not do the reading. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait. So they have what did sex tell me? On they have sex on the desk. Wait, here's and what I remember. I'll tell you what I remember. Okay, There's on. sex on the desk. It's when he realizes that she has not been yes. a professional sex worker for her yes. whole life. So he's kind of <laughs> like he's kind of like, oh, this desk, it's made of destruction. And she's like, no, it's destruction made into something. Oh, that's good. Work <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Sarah did well. <laughs> well, I don't remember it. <laughs> Jesus, uh, that sounds I, great. That sounds like special. really. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I don't I'm have sorry. anything to say. I'm sorry, <laughs> B. I'll read it. I'll read. <laughs> I'll read the scene and get back to you. B will oh forgive you. <laughs> um, <laughs> We had um Anika. I promise you guys I did write it. I don't I don't know. I don't remember it's, it, but I'm sure I wrote it. It's been a few years. <laughs> um Anika wants to know, you know, you have such an extensive backlist as we've covered. Uh how do you make these heroes and heroines stand out, you know, from each other? How do you make them unique? I don't have a great answer to that except to say like they're really real to me. Like I and I'm not like not in like a woo woo way. Like I know somebody on Twitter some like weird article went past today and it was like many writers hear themselves hear their characters talk to them like as they're writing and I was like that's that's not a thing. That doesn't happen to me at all. Um and it doesn't. Like I am god over my characters like they do what I tell them to do. Um but um they are very real to me. Like, and I think for me, part of the work of writing for me, I don't plot. Um, and so part of the work of writing for me is like 70. So if you think, so my books are about now 105, 110,000 words. Mm -hmm. um, and so, which is about 450 manuscript pages. So for me though, when I, I don't know really anything. I spend 350 pages of my drafting period, like just trying to figure out what everybody's problem is. Like what, <laughs> why are we all here? Like, yeah. so for me, a lot of that is about all the unique little things about them. Like the stories that they tell um, that seem really irrelevant to the actual star story of the book. Like the things that make mm -hmm. them feel human and honest and real. Um, and I put those in because like for me, that's work, right? Like that's yeah. me trying to write through it into like understanding them. And then usually I'm just like, well, that all gets to stay because <laughs> you know, it's words on the page. Um, it, with the exception of Cross and Pippa who have about 20,000 more words in that book that is just like the two of them talking because they really <laughs> talk to each other a lot, unsurprisingly. Um, so for me, that's really what it is. It's about like, they. I think they feel real. You know, Laura Lipman, who um, is a mystery writer, but all, she just wrote this, I think this week, a new book came out, uh, her first book of essays came out. Mm -hmm. And in that book, there's an essay about um, how, like, for her, when she um, started writing, like, when she started writing essays, she found that, like, when she wrote something that felt so personal that it couldn't possibly be understood by other people, those are the moments where, like, other people understood her the most. Okay. And I think that's a really wonderful way of, like, framing how you write characters. Like, the worst, the most boring characters in romance are the ones that feel like all of us. Yeah. 
yeah. right? Like what you want is a character who's like a little bit odd so that yeah. you can sort of see your flaws or foibles or oddness in her or him. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I think that's the, I don't know if that's a good answer, but that's, I think the <laughs> answer, like it's the end, it's the, yeah. that's why you understand them or you feel like you know them better. And that's how they stay different, right? It's yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, they have weird foibles. Um, so this next question comes from Sophie and she said that she's read all of your books now through Summer of Sarah McLean and she thinks you're a genius. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Sophie, you can come over anytime. <laughs> so her question starts out with that your books often have a bad parent trope. So how do you balance the characters' personal, personal responsibilities for their actions and then mm. mix that with the trauma from their bad parent? And like, does maybe, yeah. has your perspective on that kind of changed throughout writing? Well, I've been in therapy, you know, for a long time. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, look, bad parents are really good. Uh, bad parents make people do a lot of bad things or a lot of problematic things and makes dumb choices and like, you know, bad parents are, you know, and they also, they're sort of a cornerstone trope of, of historicals for sure. Um, but we all, but, you know, I don't have, I don't have particularly bad parents, but you know, my parents, my parents drama from their childhood impacts me as like a grown up, right? So parents are a huge piece of the puzzle when you're writing a character who's authentic. Mm -hmm. um, that said, nobody can blame their poor actions on their parents. Well, people can blame their poor <laughs> actions on their parents, but it's always wrong, right? Like we have agency as people. And so I really like it, particularly with heroes when they are idiots about that. And they're like, well, my father was terrible and therefore I'm going to be terrible. Or, yeah. you know, I don't think I've ever written this, but like, um, I can't have children because my father was so bad and I oh, would yeah. never, the you know. The bloodline make... ends here. Oh, no, no. Oh, I've written the bloodline ends oh, here yes. many, many, <laughs> many times. But, um, but I don't like, I don't like it when a, when a hero thinks, um, I, no, that's not true. I like to read it when a hero thinks like, oh, mm -hmm. I too will follow in the footsteps of my terrible father. Mm -hmm. And then the heroine's like smacks him outside the head and it's like, <laughs> that's not how it works, dummy. <laughs> um, that moment where I like a hero who's so in his own head that he mm -hmm. needs the heroine to just like really punch him in the face and get him out of his own mm -hmm. drama. Yeah. Um, that is unsurprising to you as people who have read the entire, the entire catalog of my work. So for me, that's how I, like, that's why I like a bad parent in a book because I feel mm -hmm. like it underscore, it really like require, in order for someone to, to be changed over the course of a, a romance novel, they have to change themselves. Yeah. Right. And overcoming whatever drama your parents deliver you whether or not you've had bad parents is something that we all have to do yeah. to be adults. Yeah. Um, all right, so the next question comes from Katie, uh, what Katie read next. Um, are there any characters you wish you'd written differently? That is a good question. I should ask you that. <laughs> are there any <laughs> characters that I wish I'd written differently? Um, I, I don't think so. I think I'm pretty happy with most of my books. No, I know that there are a lot of readers who dis, I know that I have, I have a lot of care. I have several characters who readers really don't like, um, but I like them fine. So <laughs> that's what's important. Um, you know, I joke about Born being like the real hard one, um, but he, I don't, I don't, I think he was written the way that he, needed to be written like his journey yeah. was the, the right journey i just don't care for him as a person yeah no his journey <laughs> yeah. like made me tear up in our instagram by the live. end like yeah. by yeah. the end you're is but it, he gave he put me really through the ringer like that was probably the hardest book i've ever written oh really and i threw out the day of the duchess and started over so yeah. like the idea but like I, if I had to choose, I would happily rewrite Day of the Duchess again, oh, wow. then rewrite, then go through the prop, the process of writing Born. But I actually think the Casino series it is, holds together the way that it does mm -hmm. because I worked so hard on like Born yeah. 
or required me to really think through what I was trying to do. Yeah, he's a great start to that series. Um, all right. I so think I also there's something about that series that goes, you know, and, and this is something I thought about a lot when I was reading Immortals After Dark for the podcast, but I think there's something about that casino series that is about the evolution of romance too. Like Bourne is a real old school hero. Mm -hmm. um, and then the heroes become more, they evolve. Like yeah. it's like that old, like Neanderthal, like man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, men right. growing up on these two feet, like born as like functionally a chimpanzee, and, like evolving the fucking West. Right? Like, exactly, I mean, and West is like up here, right? Like yeah. he's so intellectual. So great. <laughs> um. So now we'll be opening it up to questions from the chat. So get them, write them up, bring them to us. So this first one that I see is from Stefan Wonderland. Do you have specifically a favorite hero or heroine? I I don't. I have um characters who I really love together. Like I like I said I really love Cross and Pippa together. Um I really love Wit and Hattie together. Um I have a special place in my heart for Hattie for lots of reasons. Um which who is the heroine of Brazen and the Beast. Um but no, I think they all have a lot of their they're all a little bit me and a little bit people I love. I really love Temple though. Yes. We fall fall in love yes. with Temple and Mara. Oh my God. I really love Temple. They were poor, so bad. Incredible. <laughs> poor Temple. Oh, poor Temple. I really, it's I so really great. put him through the ringer. But Mara is everything. <laughs> so it's okay. Well, I'm glad you guys feel that way. I get the most mail Mara. about Mara. A lot of people don't like her. Well, so. They're wrong. <laughs> I think so. No. <laughs> <He's a queen. laughs> oh, lots of love for Mara. But okay, I think we have time for maybe two more questions from Yeah, I mean I'm here, so you I'm happy to say, <laughs> but you you whatever you need. Okay. Um I yeah, I think Dana I don't have the ability to pull them up. So this is maybe a request. A oh question. God, is this the Benedict request? <laughs> oh, they're in the chat. They're in the chat. Um, People but we'd love Benedict. love to all see favorite side characters get their HEA. <laughs> I just don't know, you guys. <laughs> I know, I know you want him. I get email about him every, every day. No. So, <laughs> every day. Every day in the comments on most of my Instagram posts, I mean, like, I get it. You all want it. And um, what I will tell you is that after having read however many of my books as you've read in an order, mm -hmm. I cannot imagine how any of you could imagine, <laughs> like, how I would write a book about Benedict, who is, <laughs> like, deeply, deeply, like, decent and normal. <laughs> and like a very good man I know. who is surely going to meet a very good woman and get very nicely married and live a long and happy life. But like, <laughs> I mean, me who likes to break her heroes until they are like crawling on glass. Like, come on. I know. Come on. Have what? you learned nothing from the summer of Sarah McLean? <laughs> we all see him with like a rakes. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could like he could be <laughs> with somebody wild, but I really think Benedict was be, would be like, no, this is crazy, <laughs> and like, no, I will find and, another person. Good yeah. luck to you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I see this. Yeah, I see this. <laughs> Poor Benedict. Um, mm -hmm. I keep saying uh, from the beginning, I have said like Benedict is is like if Tessa Dare ever decided she wanted to write with me. I would write Benedict's story, but only with Tessa Dare, who would make I mean, him like soft and wonderful mm -hmm. and like lovable. But for me, like, no, you guys, you realize that if I wrote Benedict's story, it would be like chapter one, Benedict's life destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be like, what happened? Oh, no. <laughs> I know. I think people like him too, because he's so nice. <laughs> like, that's that's me. why. I mean, the scene in the library when he like takes yes. off his glasses and is like, oh, you realize now I'm going to have to hit you. And like, it hits yes. well. like it's a very funny, like 
he's a decent yeah, dude. A de- I, and we guys, need more decent men. I know, I know we do, but I you know, know. He's, other yeah, people can write them for you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a comment: boring on the street and a freak in the sheet. So. <laughs> Yeah, like a short erotic novella. There you go. Um, a few questions about kids getting future books, but I really love this particular one about seeing Caroline in the future. I know, you know, Caroline is one of those characters who I really loved and I sort of like put a pin in her. And at the time I was still thinking about YA and I was like, Caroline would be really fun. Yeah. Um, you know, like I can see Caroline on a boat somewhere. <laughs> like she's <laughs> very cool, and I would like to see Caroline come back. I also, um, yeah, I think she would be really fun. Maybe I'll put her into Hell's Bells. Maybe there'll be a way to get her in. I mean, like <laughs> she's hanging around that casino. I'm writing myself a note, telling yeah. Asriel off. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love Asriel. Me I think too. You have this ability, and I think this is the Benedict thing, right? You create these, the hero and heroine are so wonderful. We care so much about them, but we also end up caring so much about the whole cast of characters you create, which yeah. is why through the group, we find ourselves so invested. Yeah. Every time we see them, we're like, are they happy too? Are they okay too? <laughs> like, we yeah. just want to know everyone's okay. <laughs> and, and look, the good thing is it's romance. So everyone yes, is. Exactly. Like, everybody lived a happy life who good. deserved to live a happy life. Good. You know? um, the hot doctor's okay. The hot doctor is back, you guys. He's all over yes. Baron Uncle Bastard. <laughs> We're excited to reunite. Because <laughs> I was like, I'm not inventing a new doctor. I already yeah. have this hot doctor. <laughs> <laughs> <The best> doctor. <laughs> nope. Oh uh, Asriel, you will see Asriel in the Baron Uncle Bastards. Um, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. that's the other thing is, like, there's always a good reason to bring somebody back. Like, mm-hmm. um. Uh, whenever I have, whenever I'm like, who can, you know, I need a new character. I learned really early that for me as a reader, I love Easter eggs, right? Like I love it. What One of the things, the reason why I read Joanna Lindsay religiously <laughs> was because like anytime you picked up a Joanna Lindsay book, you would see like all the old characters going by. Yeah. And so for me as a writer, why wouldn't I create a world like that for my readers? Yeah. Um, so I think that it's very likely that if you have a question about somebody, like they are either on the page again at some point or um, very happy. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Awesome. All right. Um, I think we have time for one more question from the live chat. What? Anyone... When the man says her, that Joanna was her neighbor growing up. What? What? <laughs> That's amazing. Lizanne. <gasps> Whoa. Me, number. <laughs> we need to know more. Was that amazing? Was she amazing? Tell me everything. I'm dying. I'm dying. Can we have Lizanne like join? <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on. I'm, okay. uh, trying to find the last question I saw. Okay. So tell us about your upcoming contemporary. Oh, yes. yeah. You guys, so I wrote a contemporary because my friend Sierra Simone, who mm-hmm. um, many of you have probably read, um, she, you know, wanted to, she, like, we, ha- we, we go away once a year um, to Kiowa Island, South Carolina, and um, we go with Sophie Jordan and Louisa Edwards and some other people, and um, Sierra, self-published, like, is an indie published author, indie publishes and she had this idea to write something English set um, and contemporary. And I thought, and she was like, you should do it. You should do it with me. It would be fun. And I was like, okay. And I, <laughs> Why not? And, you know, because we were in the pool drinking wine. And so, and I was like, again, <laughs> bad ideas happen when, you know, things happen when Sarah drinks too much. Um, and so I was like, that sounds great. I'm totally going to do it. And then um, I did it during quarantine. Actually, it was a palate cleanser. I finished daring in the duke and then i you know had some other stuff and then i was mm-hmm. like quarantine is terrible what can i do that like is really just like to clear the slate so i wrote this um and it was incredibly hard like <laughs> so don't get excited because i don't <laughs> think i'm right i'm not like oh now i write now i write contemporary too All right. no i like i wrote a one-off and it was really hard like it was hard to write i understand a lot about contemporary romance now because it's hard mm-hmm. to write like Guess what you can't write in contemporaries? Like 
basically any oh. Sarah McLean hero. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. they all sound totally like absolutely deeply problematic. Like they right. all need to be sent to jail. So <laughs> like, <laughs> I literally was like, not like I don't know how to do this because I yeah. don't have the runway. Right. Yeah. So it's a novella, it's contemporary, it's a secret duke novella. Um hiding. or like a see it's like a duke in hiding. Um and the heroine is a celebrity photographer. And so it's it, I don't know. I don't know if it's any good, you guys. <laughs> like truly, I'm I'm not being coy. Like I literally yeah. do not know like what this looks like. So here's my hope, you guys. Okay. If you do read it, I mean, you should read it. You should, you should read it. See me if you like it. And this is me, like, this is me hard selling this. If you read it. Um, if you read this anthology, just promise me that if mine is terrible, you'll come back to the next historical. Yeah, of course. Because <laughs> it was really hard and, like, you know. <laughs> we are very excited to, to go into those waters with you. If, if Sierra saw this this Zoom, this conversation, she'd be like, wow, you <laughs> like, are oh, terrible yeah. at that. We've already got people pre-ordering in the comments. So. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, when this is, when this does is this my come trick. out? My, my trick is telling you I think it's pretty terrible, and now you're all going to read <laughs> well, it. Um, the, it comes out in September. September okay. 15th, maybe? Um, yeah, September. Okay. It's called Naughty Brits. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Um, and it has a great, sexy, like contemporary cover. And I mean, I don't know, it's a fun thing I did during quarantine. I love it. But now I'm writing House Bells, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. All right. So, we, Dana and I, you know, we do our lives every Friday. We always like to end on book recommendations, uh, specifically recommending romance authors of color. Mm -hmm. So, can you give us like three recommendations you think we should check out? Yes. Uh, Jody Slaughter. Yes. Who, oh, have you already done Jody? So, no, we haven't as a group. <laughs> I bought All Things Burn based on your recommendation. Heard. Yes. About it. Um, Jody Slaughter's All Things Burn is amazing um she is the heroine is being stalked set in chicago the heroine's being stalked she goes to the police and she tells the police and the police are like mm, but we really can't like we're sorry and we believe you but like there's not a whole lot we can do and so she takes matters into her own hands and hires a hitman because the stalker has <laughs> her, sister and her sister's children and the hitman is the hero and it's real great like real great um, so that's one. Uh, Alexis Daria has a new book out mm -hmm. called You Had Me at Ola, which came out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I cannot stress enough how much I love this book. Like it is, it's the, the, it's like the, the heroine, um, it's like celebrity romance. I love a, I love a celebrity mm -hmm. romance. It's like a celebrity romance. There's like a washed up actor. There's mm -hmm. like, you know, a, like there's a lot of like scandal. <laughs> There's Alexis, nobody writes like a big family and mm -hmm. community of people like Alexis. And it's just, it's sexy and smart. And it's set sort of on the set of a like Netflix style telenovela, like a new, a new Netflix show. And Alexis intersperses these chapters that are written in the perspective of the characters of the show. Oh. And I just it's she's she's brilliant it's a it's a magnificent book that's awesome um and then you said three well i already talked about kennedy but if you haven't read queen move um which is her most recent book it is like for those of you who've read old school old school um romances it's so epic it feels like i mean it's contemporary but it feels really epic in the sense that it it goes, um, it starts when the, the hero and heroine are literal babies, like in a bathtub together. Oh um, and their their parents are next door neighbors and friends. And then it, it go it spans over, you know, 30 years and it is emotional and just heartbreaking. And also like the heroine is so strong and magnificent. If you read Kennedy's earlier books, the King, the Kingmaker series, the heroine comes from there. Um, and it's just two people, two incredible people who triumph. And that is what I'm looking for in 2020. So, yes, <laughs> here for that. Yeah. 
Awesome. Um, okay, I think that is all the time that we have. Um, yeah. To everyone who has joined us in this live, thank you, thank you, thank so, you so much. So much um, for reading, you guys. I can't even believe that this happened. An endless, <laughs> endless delight, Sarah. Thank um, you. And if anyone is watching and is new to the Summer of Sarah McLean, if you want to join us, uh, you can DM myself or Dana. Our Instagram handles are below. Uh, tomorrow on Instagram Live, we will be discussing Day of the Duchess. Oh, you haven't gotten to Duchess. No. So we've been reading it all week. Uh, we're finishing our discussion tomorrow of the last few chapters. Um, this is actually one of my favorite books of all time. So I have loved this reread of it. Um, so you can join our discussion. We are then going into the holiday novella. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really Christmas novella. Very, we're completed. doing this very thorough. Um, <laughs> and then the week after we will have our first foray into the bastards. Um, so if you want to join us for these Instagram chats, discussions, we have McLean madness bracket going on right now on our Instagram <laughs> stories to what? choose your favorite. It's, Wonderful. Will you please let me know what ends up winning? I oh. want to see the bracket yes. at the end. Oh, I will send it to you, Sarah. That, I want to see it. I want to see it because I have opinions and I fill out my own bracket. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will send it. Be like you. you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but yes. Yeah, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you uh, all Sarah. So much. I'm going to ask you to hang out with us for a sure. second while Dana turns the live off. But have a wonderful night, everyone. Continue. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you're all being safe. Take care. Yes. Wear a mask, read romance, fight the patriarchy, all, all that jazz. All of it. <laughs> Bye, McLeaners. Good night, McLeaners. <laughs>